All right, everybody, this is Tom at Buxton Auto in Fate, Texas. I own a small buy here, pay here, used car lot. I also make a lot of videos about titles, title problems, title transfers, bonded titles, uh, general questions that consumers might have. This particular video is how to do a person-to-person -person title transfer in Texas. I had made this video previously. It was one of my more popular ones. Inadvertently, I used a title with a deceased gentleman's name on it, and YouTube flagged it because it had his personal information. So, I've made the video over again, made a copy of the title, and blacked out all the pertinent information. So let's start with how do we do a person-to-person -person transfer. In Texas, you need really three documents. One, if you are the seller, obviously you need your car title. Two, it is very helpful to fill out the Texas Notification of Vehicle Transfer form. What this form does is it lets the state know that you've sold the vehicle and it relieves you of liability should they use the car to go rob a bank or whatever. Then the fourth thing, third thing, getting ahead of myself here, third thing is a blank application for title for that buyer to go into his county tax office and register the vehicle in his name. Also, not a required form, but I would remind you in Texas, if you have a toll tag, you're going to want to scrape your toll tag off and you're going to want to call or go online and remove that vehicle from your toll tag. Another misnomer is it is not required that you take your license plates. Once you fill out that notification of vehicle transfer, you're not going to be liable for parking tickets or tolls or any of that kind of stuff. So some of this I will approach as a buyer and some what you'll need as a seller. So let's start out from the seller's standpoint. You found the vehicle that you want to buy. You're ready to make the deal. The uh, seller has their title. So first we want to talk about the title. So this is a photocopy of a title. I've blacked out the pertinent information here so that we don't get into trouble with YouTube. But what I want to show everybody is what to look for. As a buyer, you're going to check right here under the Remarks section. There'll be only a couple of indications. This one says exempt because in Texas, when a car is 10 years old or older, they stop tracking the mileage. And so they will just put exempt under Remarks. What you do want to look for is where it might say rebuilt, because that would mean the car was totaled out by an insurance company, rebuilt, put back on the road. Those vehicles are generally a lot less valued than vehicles that are not rebuilt. So if the, if the seller has said, hey, it's a rebuilt title, that's cool. Understand the vehicle's worth a little bit less. Hopefully you've negotiated that. If they didn't mention that to you, that would be time to renegotiate the deal if it says rebuilt right here. So it can say rebuilt, that's bad. It could say exempt because it's more than 10 years old. Or if it was less than 10 years old when the title transfer was previously done, it will show you mileage right here. The next thing I want you to look at, considering yourself as the buyer, is when it's time to sign the back of the title. Up front here, it will list the customer's name. I'm sorry, the, the current owner's name. It could have one name or two names. If it has two names, both of the people on the title will need to sign the back. If it has one name, then only that one person will sign. But here's where a lot of ha errors happen. If their name is John Smith, and the front of the title says John Smith, when it's time for them to sign that title, they're going to need to sign it as John Smith. If the front of their title says John Q. Smith, they're going to need to sign John Q. Smith. If it says John Quincy Smith III, they're going to need to sign John Quincy Smith III. Any variation from what is printed on the front of the title to what they sign on the back of the title could cause your county tax office to not accept your title and require another form to be signed and good luck finding the seller after you've done the deal. Here is a copy, 
copy of the back of the title. What we want to look at when we are buying the car is that nothing is written in here, okay? If you're an individual, there is only one title transfer allowed, and that is right here at the top, assignment of title. If you notice the other three spaces, they say assignment of title by dealer. If you're not a dealer, you can't use those. If this title has already got someone else's name written in, you cannot use that title, okay? The name on the front of this title needs to be signed by the seller right here as signature of seller, all right? So when they are signing, you will, as the buyer, want to make sure that they are signing their name exactly as it's printed on the front. Now, if you are the seller, obviously you need to sign your name exactly as it's printed on the front. And you want that buyer to write in their name, address, zip code, etc., in front of you and sign signature of seller. Why I'm so particular about this is particularly when you're selling cars online. There's a lot of people that will go out and buy a car, have you leave the title open and want to just take your signed title and leave. And then they're going to go and sell that car for a profit and then hand your signed title to the next guy and hope that he's going to go register it. This is called title jumping or curb stoning because they're selling the car on the street corner, whatever it is. It is actually a felony in all 50 states. So you want to make sure as the buyer that that's not going to happen to your title. You're not legally responsible if you have all your documentation. As the buyer of the car, you want to make sure you're buying the car from the person whose name it is in. Make sense, everybody? Okay. So, the seller has signed signature of seller. The buyer has written in his name, title, sale date, mileage, or exempt if the car is over 10 years old. And he has signed his name and printed it. All right, step one is out of the way. Step two, possibly the most important part of this from a seller's standpoint is this one right here. This form is Texas Motor Vehicle Transfer Notification. This can be done online or printed and snail mailed. I prefer to do it online, but I fill one out on paper when I'm buying a car from someone so that I'm sure it's done. You as the buyer will need to provide your information to your seller right here new owner information. Now, Mr. Seller, you're going to want to fill out the top two portions. And basically this is, who did you sell your car to? When did you do it? And did you keep your license plates? Get this form filled out and keep a paper copy. Right in the top, it will tell you where you can go online to complete it online. I keep a paper copy because I want that seller's handwriting on this form. I'm sorry, that buyer's handwriting on this form. And then I go electronically as the buyer and I fill this form out. What it will do is send you an email receipt from the state saying they've received it. And then of course, once it's received, you're no longer responsible if they are robbing banks, getting speeding tickets, getting parking tickets, running tolls. So it releases your liability and you don't have to worry anymore. Also, it starts that 30 day countdown where that buyer has to go into his tax office and get the title transferred and taken care of. On that note, going to your Texas uh, County Tax Assessor to get your title transfer done, you will need the application for title. As the seller, all you have to do is down at the bottom, you're going to sign as signature of seller. If you are one of those anal retentive that wants all the documents ready to go, then you can fill in your vehicle information right here in the second box. This big third box is where the buyer is going to write in their name, their address, etc. Y'all are going to write in how much the vehicle sold for, and then the buyer will also need to sign. 
So just like with the title transfer where the buyer had to sign his name, whatever he signed on the back of the title, Fred P. Johnson, on his application for title, he's going to need to be Fred P. Johnson. And when he signs his name, he's going to need to be Fred P. Johnson. If signatures do not match, a county tax office has the right and often will not accept the documents because the names don't match. Now, my name is Tom Griffin, but if I have a document that says Thomas Griffin and I sign it Tom Griffin, it's not acceptable. So make sure that your names are matching. The last thing to think about before you go to your county tax office to get your title transferred is the vehicle must be inspected within 90 days prior to the sale. What that means is if the vehicle has not been inspected at least 90 days before it was sold, you're going to need to go get a state inspection before you can get your tax. Not a big deal. There's a website you can look it up at, mytexascar.org. I'll put a link below and you type in your VIN number and it will show you the inspection history of that vehicle so you can determine when it was last inspected if the seller doesn't have their inspection paperwork with them. So that's it. It's a straightforward process, three documents. And in Texas, it's a little bit different if you're a new Texas resident, we get our driver licenses from one place, the Texas Department of Public Safety, but we go and do our tax work, which is collecting the tax for your vehicle. So license plates, title transfers, registrations come from your local tax assessor. So if you're new to Texas, if you don't know where that is, you can just Google your county and local tax assessor office and you'll find it. There you go. That's how to do a private party transfer in Texas. Most important, everybody's signature has to match as it's printed somewhere else. As the buyer, make sure that that title, that's the name on the front, is who's signing on the back, and that is the only transfer that's been done. As the seller, make sure you're signing your name just like it's printed. Make sure that buyer is writing their name in in front of you and that you get that notification of transfer done. Y'all get that done. This will be a quick, easy process. I appreciate you watching my video. My videos aren't just about the cars that I'm selling. They can be about any number of title questions. Feel free to take a look at the description below. It has links to all of these forms. I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. The video is 13 minutes long. I hope you watched it, and thanks a lot.